Hello and good day, everybody. This is Kyla, and today on The State of Health, we're diving deep into the realm of treatment-resistant depression. The State of Health is a semi-weekly podcast and publication where we cover the most vital news and breakthrough research in medicine and healthcare. For more engaging content, be sure to visit stateofhealth.care where we host our YouTube channel, newsletter, and publication. Welcome back to The State of Health. Today, we're setting our focus on major depressive disorder, a condition which unfortunately often proves resistant to first-line treatments. The primary aim of any initial treatment is to achieve remission and prevent relapse, yet up to two-thirds of patients may not experience remission with their initial treatment. Furthermore, many experience a relapse within the first year. This is known as treatment-resistant depression, a condition affecting 10 to 30 percent of patients with major depressive disorder. This alarming prevalence leads to increased hospitalizations, coexisting conditions, higher mortality rates, and significant economic burden. In the medical world, a variety of treatments, including oral antidepressants and augmentation medications, are used to combat treatment-resistant depression. One such medication is extended-release quetiapine, which is widely used for this purpose. However, the only treatment specifically approved in Europe for this condition is esketamine nasal spray, which is administered in combination with either a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, SSRI for short, or a serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor abbreviated as SNRI. This treatment has shown promise, reducing depressive symptoms and lowering the risk of relapse. However, there is a lack of data on direct comparisons between esketamine nasal spray in combination with either an SSRI or SNRI and the augmentation strategy of using extended-release quetiapine in combination with an SSRI or SNRI. This has spurred a study with the hypothesis that patients with treatment-resistant depression would achieve higher remission and relapse-free rates at both week 8 and week 32 when treated with esketamine nasal spray and an SSRI or SNRI, rather than with extended-release quetiapine and an SSRI or SNRI. In an open-label, single-blind, multicenter Phase 3b randomized, active-controlled trial, patients were assigned to receive either flexible doses of esketamine nasal spray or extended-release quetiapine. Both were combined with an SSRI or SNRI. The primary endpoint was remission, defined as a score of 10 or less on the Montgomery Asberg Depression Rating Scale, at week 8. The results of the study were revealing. Out of the 676 patients, 336 were given esketamine and 340 received quetiapine. More patients in the esketamine group had remission at week 8, with 27.1% in the esketamine group versus only 17.6% in the quetiapine group. Moreover, a higher percentage of patients in the esketamine group experienced no relapse through week 32 after achieving remission at week 8, 21.7% in contrast to 14.1% in the quetiapine group. Over the 32-week follow-up, the percentage of patients with remission, the percentage of patients with a treatment response, and the change in the MADRAS score from baseline all favored esketamine nasal spray. The adverse events were consistent with the established safety profiles of the treatments. So, what's the bottom line here? The key takeaway from today's discussion is the potential efficacy of esketamine nasal spray in treating treatment-resistant depression. The study we discussed compared esketamine nasal spray with extended-release quetiapine, revealing that patients who received esketamine were more likely to achieve remission by week 8 and had a lower risk of relapse by week 32 than those receiving quetiapine. Even more, esketamine was associated with a greater reduction in depression scores across the trial and a higher rate of early response to treatment. This is significant because treatment-resistant depression affects a notable 10 to 30 percent of patients with major depressive disorder, leading to increased hospitalizations, coexisting conditions, higher mortality rates, and substantial economic burden. In an area where the primary aim is to achieve remission and prevent relapse, these findings shed light on a promising treatment option that could potentially transform patient outcomes. Moreover, the findings from this study may inform and shape future guidelines and practices in this realm of healthcare. While more research and trials may be needed to further affirm the effectiveness of esketamine nasal spray in treating treatment-resistant depression, the results of the study are indeed a step forward in addressing a crucial unmet need in mental health care. Thus, it's safe to say that the implications of these findings are far-reaching and could potentially revolutionize how we approach treatment-resistant depression. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's State of Health. If you enjoyed this, please do me such a huge favor. Click those like and subscribe buttons, and if you're listening as a podcast, go consider leaving a review or a five-star rating. Don't forget to check out stateofhealth.care for more relevant medical news and content. 
Until next time, keep your curiosity peaked and your stethoscope close. 